criminal history again i think it, it it bears in favor of detention in this case some of his criminal history is admittedly dated uh, but i think it, it tells a story because there's a consistent pattern of either bond forfeitures or difficulty complying with the terms of post conviction court supervision so looking at page three of the report there is a misdemeanor charges again these are dated 2008 but there's a bond forfeiture there went on to page four the report again a bit dated but more serious conduct at the very bottom there's an aggravated battery of a government official which is a felony mr offered pleaded guilty to that charge but again, there was a violation of probation filed and mr offered's probation was terminated unsatisfactory he went on to page five of the report more misdemeanor charges. I'm looking at about the middle of the page. The offense that took place on September 12, 2011, 10 years old at this point, but there was a, Mr. Offer was given bond. And this, these are misdemeanor charges, certainly not the, the gravity of charges he's facing. In this case, there was a bond forfeiture. Went on to page six of the pretrial bail report, uh, more conduct that is misdemeanor, but involves violence, battery, bodily harm, there's a bomb for there in July 15th of 2014. It's definitely the a cloud chaser TV. Two cases down, it's not clear what the nature of this offense is, but Mr. Offer did not appear in court, and then there was a judgment on the bomb forfeiture in 2015. And so, looking at, I point this out, there's a 2016 and 2018 charge on in Mr. Offer's uh, criminal history, the 2018 charge was an acquittal, but coming back to Exhibit 1, again, relating to Mr. Offer's character uh, to make truthful representations, if you look at Exhibit 1, there's a line where it asks on the FBA application if Mr. Offer's had any criminal charges, guilty pleas in the last five years, based on, so five years from June 24, 2020, would have taken us back to June 2016. Looking at page six of the report, there are certainly charges in 2016 and 2018 rendering this information and these answers and set forth in Exhibit 1 untrue. So Mr. Offer's history and characteristics, whether it's making accurate, honest representations to pretrial services, making honest and accurate representations to the United States government in the form of Small Business Administration, and dealing with an inability to, or difficulty rather, complying with the terms of pretrial release or post-conviction court supervision. Mr. Offer has experienced some difficulty in doing that. I submit that his history and characteristics weigh in favor of detention in this case. And so coming to the last factor under 3142G, the nature and seriousness of the danger to the community in this case. Again, this is a racketeering murder that's charged and the assault of two other individuals committed in brazen fashion in the middle of the day. At least 38 shots were fired. This was not it's definitely in a crowded Chase area. It's a crowded business district. Three people were harmed. One of them was killed. Others could have been harmed. Other people were around. I submit to the court that this fourth factor weighs in favor of detention based on how this offense was committed. It, it, there is a danger to the community here. Your Honor. And, and so based on walking through the four factors under 3142G, the government's position is that Mr. Offer should be detained pending trial on the basis of a danger to the community and risk of flight. Again, just underscoring there is a presumption subject to rebuttal, but a presumption that on the basis of risk of flight, Mr. Offer should be detained pending trial. Uh, Mr. Jordan, one uh, question on the SBA loan application exhibit one. Uh, I agree with you based on the pretrial services report. There seems to be a conflict as to his address, uh, especially when you definitely cloud the TV. information you proffered regarding the location of his actual arrest. But as to the SBA loan application, I don't see where it calls for his home address. It does have a business address, and then it says primary contact. But I, am I missing something on the left side of the document that would require the home address to be listed there? 
Your Honor, I think that's fair. Taking a second look at this, that's fair. I can see that point. That's just contact information. All right. I just want to make sure I wasn't missing something. Um, all right. Thank you for that presentation, Mr. Somerville. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm asking you to not follow the recommendation of pretrial to uh, detain Mr. Alford uh, and that um, he's not the safety of the community and other persons does not require for him to be detained pending trial. He's 30 years old. He has four children that he supports. He's bonded and part of their lives. He has five siblings and a mother all living in the Chicagoland area where he has lived for his whole life. He has no passport. He's never traveled outside of the United States to the mid Midwest, to my knowledge. He's not a risk of flight. He graduated from Fenger High School in 2011, went to Kennedy King College. Um, those are his um, family history. Uh, responding to the government's presentation on the nature and circumstances, um, they presented no evidence that Mr. Offord was involved in this crime. Uh, the only crime that Mr. Offord um, is, is alleged to have uh, committed here are some PPP um, documentation uh, discrepancies according to the government. But what they said about the case is that Mr. Offord bought a car. Some unknown person was in his car. Some unknown person may have it's driven downtown. Some TV. unknown person may have uh, gotten out of that car. Unknown person. There's no evidence that Mr. Offord is involved in this crime in any way. There's no evidence been presented to Proffer under the nature and circumstances that he had knowledge either before or during the commission's offense that he will participate in any way. So we're asking your honor not to consider the nature and the circumstances until they can tie Mr. Offord into the, the crime. What did he do? He could have been miles away with no, like I said, no participation or knowledge either before or during the commission of the offense, which would make him uh, not responsible for the actions of others. Well, I I'm sorry, continue, Mr. Yes, Summer. no, and then, and so getting into the, the history and characteristics of uh, Mr. Offord, as counsel, as uh, counsel for the government conceded, uh, many of the entries it's in definitely his cloud chaser TV. history are long ago. Um, eight of the matters were SOL stricken from the, the court docket with no disposition, four of the items, four of the entries, there's an unknown disposition, there's a not guilty, there are supervisions, and there are three misdemeanors where he spent two days, uh, time considered served on those. What it really comes down to is an aggravated battery when he was 18 years old, 11 years ago or so. Um, uh, the not guilty, should not be considered by the court. And then the home invasion in, in 16, where it lists no disposition, should not be considered by the court. The SOL is only one, or the BF, the BF, the bond forfeitures, only one of them resulted in a warrant being issued. So they must not have been that serious. Um, moving on, Your Honor, it doesn't indicate why the violation of probation was filed, sustained, and probation terminated unsatisfactory. It could have been a failure to pay a fine, you know, punishing him because he's poor. We're asking you not to consider that. He's dealt with a cloud chaser TV. The, uh, Mr. Offer has never been in the penitentiary. He's never been arrested for a gun or a weapons violation. He's never been arrested for uh, gang activity or narcotic sales. They do have a delivery of some cannabis in his background, but certainly not the the RICO gang uh, violent organization operation. He does not fit that profile and the data and the evidence in the report does not sustain, does not support that he's a, a danger to any persons in the community. Um, they use his smoking marijuana as a reason for him to be detained. 
uh, smoking cannabis is legal. Um, again, non-compliance with the probation is listed in the report as a reason for not to let him fight the case from the outside. But we don't know what the violation of probation was for. Uh, lack of verifiable employment. Uh, half the world, it seems, has been unemployed during this global pandemic. That should not be held against him. And he doesn't have a, a stable residence. That should not be held against him. He, ha- he holds no mortgage. Um, he has family members. He, he doesn't have.